In the past few videos, we've seen conclusive evidence that seafoam can make a pretty big difference inside an engine. But many of you have commented specifically regarding cleaning out the carbon deposits that build up inside an engine that water is going to do a far better job. So why waste seven to ten dollars on seafoam if you can do the same thing with water? In fact, about 75% of you voted that water is going to win this contest. So I'm very excited to do this test today to find out once and for all which product works better. Now, just for, we have all different levels. We have ASC certified mechanics, we have engineers, and we also have folks that have never really had much exposure to engines. So I just want to make sure everyone's on the same page. We do not want to ever add water to the fuel tank and definitely not to the crankcase. This is only adding water to the internal combustion chamber through the carburetor or the intake manifold if you, if you have a car. So um, just want to make sure we're all straight on that. So this is only, if you have issues going on in the, uh, in, in the carburetor or fuel injection system, uh, there are other products that you can use. Same thing if you have uh, something going on in the bottom end of the engine, you, you're going to have to use another product. But hey, if you're just trying to clean up some carbon, water is practically free and it's available everywhere in the world. So let's find out which works better. Okay, we're about to do the cold engine compression test. This is before doing the water treatment. So let's get an engine temperature read at 72.5 degrees Fahrenheit. By the way, the temperature range on this um, temperature gun is minus 56 degrees Fahrenheit to 1,022 degrees Fahrenheit. So we'll be using this temperature gauge throughout the, um, throughout the testing today. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and um, spin the engine over five different times and I'm going to give it a pretty hard um, uh, pull and we're going to see what kind of compression we get on this engine. Okay, we've got our cold engine compression. Now we're going to test, we're going to warm up the engine and test the compression again. Okay, so the engine's warm. I'm going to go ahead and do a compression test on it and see if there's any change from the uh, cold. Okay, lots of advice on how to use water and a lot of commenters suggested that I come up with some way of adding water very slowly. So that's what I've tried to do here. This here is a clamp that's going to tighten down on the hose to reduce the flow or increase the flow of water. So what I'm going to do, this is very much like a medical IV bag. I'm going to add water to the bag that's going to flow down this hose. It's going to be regulated by this um, by this clamp and then finally it's going to come out at the end of the hose. Another thing that, that um, commenter said was it's important we get the engine up to full operating temperature. We do not want to add water to a cold engine. So before I add any sort of um, water to the intake, what I'm going to do is get a temperature reading.
Okay guys, it's been about two hours of slow dripping of water into this engine. And so, as you can see, it looks like we have some blow-by. It looks like we have some water um, that's mixed in with some oil and it's starting to come out of the carburetor. So, um, this is an unfortunate turn of events. We fe I fed the water extremely slow, again, about two hours for about um, not even a gallon of water in two hours. So I had to add fuel a couple of times. And as you can see, this is the risk you have of using water. I did not anticipate this result. Okay, as you can see on the dipstick we have, looks like a milky, a milky colored substance. This is, of course, oil and water mixed together. And you can see where it's at. It's about um, a quarter inch above the full line. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and clean this up, mess up. I'm going to go ahead and pull out the, the milky white oil. And I'm going to run a couple of oil cycles through it to clean this up. And then we're going to start the engine up again and see how it runs. So it's very important I get this oil, this milky oil out of the crankcase. So what I'm going to do is instead of dropping the plug underneath, I'm just going to use a vacuum pump setup that I put together a while back. Um, but anyway, all I'm going to use is basically a vacuum pump that you would use to pull a vacuum on an air conditioning system, whether it's your house or your car. This pulls a vacuum and, and gets rid of the moisture. But um, what I did was I just set up a, a couple of hoses running into this jar. So when I power up this vacuum pump, it's going to draw the oil out of the crankcase into this jar. And then what I'll do is put some fresh oil in the engine, run it. And then what I'll do is uh, shut it back down, drain it. And we're going to do as many cycles as it takes of fresh oil till we get the uh, milky color out of the oil. As you can see, this has a lot of water content in it. Okay, I'm pulling nothing but air, so I think I've got most of the oil out, or just about all the oil out. And that's the last of it right there. So what I'm going to do now is go ahead and add that uh, fresh oil. Okay, we got all the oil out, so I'm going to do this uh, one more time, see what it looks like. It looks really clear now. So we got all the uh, moisture out of the oil. So now what I want to do is just warm the engine up. We'll take a temperature measurement, and then we're going to run a compression test to see what, how the uh, engine is doing. I'm going to go ahead and do the warm engine compression test. This is after the water treatment. We're about to do the cold engine compression test. I'm going to go ahead and take the engine temperature. It is right at 73 degrees, 73 to 75. Hopefully you can read that. The exhaust is at 68.2 degrees, so the engine is cool. I'm going to go ahead and spin the engine over five times. It's time to go ahead and take the cylinder head off to see if this water outperformed seafoam.
very interesting results. On one hand, the cylinder head and the, the uh, combustion chamber looks a lot cleaner. On the other hand, we ended up with water inside the engine. I spent two hours running the water through the engine at a, at a very, very consistent pace. I tried to follow directions like uh, many of you provided some really good suggestions on, on making sure that I didn't dump too much water in at once. So I did not do that. It was a very slow trickle the entire time. And I actually had to add fuel to the lawnmower to keep this lawnmower going. And also, did you notice the exhaust temperatures as well as the cylinder head temperature was way down as water was being added to the combustion chamber? So um, what do you think about the compression uh, test and, and the results of that? So who do you think won this contest? Um, overall, seafoam or water? That's one question. So who won the contest? Seafoam or water? And the second question I have is I really would like to know, just a vote, would you use water in your engine as far as um, to, to remove the carbon? Anyway, thank you for watching this video and I hope you'll consider subscribing. Thank you.